Hello and welcome back to our database discussion course. Uh -huh. Last time we produced a database, we created a database. Uh -huh. This time we want to create a table, put in a table in our database to fill in data. So you see there is quite a lot of things which I have to define first before I can fill in data. I have to find a lot of things. Yeah? I have to give the database a little bit of structure. This uh, structure, this language, or this, this, this data definition language, DTL actually it's called, it's part of SQL, Structured Query Language. Yeah? The DTL part of SQL is there to define the structure of the data. Data definition language, DTL. So, we use create to create a database and we can use create to create a table. Okay. I already prepared here. Yeah. So I called MariaDB. I've selected with use database my database. And now I'm going to create I'm going to create my table. And this is done with create table. I want to have a student's database okay i want to have a student's database so my table is called student list student list 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 yeah. and now it's a little bit more complicated i would make a semicolon enter yeah. but uh -uh, i need to define some attributes also yeah, because just because there's a table, I need to define columns, the attributes of a record, yeah, of a data set. So, the nice thing here is, in MariaDB, I can press enter. If I don't do the semicolon, my statement will go on. Okay. The first field I want to introduce is already something which is a little bit artificial, let's say. It's a, a little bit artificial. Because we said we, we have to use a key. We have to use a key in our database and the key must be unique in the whole table. Yeah? So if I'm selecting the sure name, yeah? then there's only one Maya. Yeah? K is not possible because there are a lot of Mayas and Schusters and whatever. Yeah? If I'm selecting the given name, then there's only one cow. Yeah? Also not possible. The most common thing is to use a surrogate key, a so-called surrogate key, which is an artificial number, let's call it, yeah, which is simply unique in the whole table. And this is then, this person has this and this number, and that's it. Okay. I will name this student ID. Yeah. I could easily write ID. Yeah. Say okay, this is from type integer. Integer is an integer number. Okay, I can use this, but it's not good practice. Good practice is simply student ID to name it a little bit with more meaning. Yeah, because if I end up with ten tables and ten times ID, I don't know exactly. Then I just have to write the language, and I can simply get confused. Yeah. So, student the key, student ID, I think it's okay. Okay. So this is my first column. Yeah. Then of course I need to have a yeah the type, the name, the type. I've just used now int. Like you will know what this means. Yeah. There are some types. There are some types in SQL. You can find them out in the internet easily, but also in your script. Yeah. I've written them. I've written them. Yeah. And now, make me disappear, that you can have a look. Yeah. These are the string types, so the text types. Yeah. Character, bar char, binary, blah, 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 blah. A lot of, you can read through it. Yeah. These are date and time types. Yeah. And here we've got our number types. And we can see integer is something between minus 8 million to 8.4 million to 8.4 million. Yeah. So quite 
a lot of number and I could even give a size and this is the visualized size so the showing so it's usually 255 enough we don't have to enter here anything okay so integer yeah now we also want to provide a sure name and a given name yeah and this we will do with varchar yeah and here the size is the maximum length of our name we will type this in now okay so change yeah. so student student for name and this is a voucher and with the length of 20 I would say 20 should be sufficient okay. student for name Back. Then student <laughs> I will write this false now student uh, for name uh, sure name it's also a voucher and it's also 20 should be sufficient yeah, even for my name yeah. and then everybody has a is born at a certain date yeah So I'll write born and I'll have this at date. And now I'm finished. This is my table. Four attributes, ID, forename, given as forename, sure name, and, and born. When I was born, enter. Query OK. OK. Have now produced the table. Seems like because it says query OK. If I want to go sure if I am, have created this table, yeah, I can simply write describe and the table name. Yeah? So that's stu student list. Yeah? And ta ta! There it is. Exactly what I entered. Do I have to remember the tables I've entered? Now I enter table, then I enter other table. How was the first name of the two? I have to write something down? No, there is also uh, a command. Yeah, command. This means show tables. Yeah. And this show tables shows the tables in my database. Yeah. And you see, student list is one table. Yeah. So this is some sort of content. It's very useful because I don't want to say it will happen to you, but it will happen to you. That you wrote a table or defined a table and you made a typo like me in the student ID and so on. You made a typo and then you don't know what the table's name is. Show tables works. Okay. One thing you might notice, I've said we need a key in our table, we need a unique key. And I wanted to have this student ID, I wanted to have this be this the key, but there is nothing written in the column of key. Nothing. Yeah? This means there's no key defined. Yeah? That's bad. Yeah? This is why usually we do add not only a name and a type, but additional attributes. So, it would be better, would have been better, yeah, to use the following, yeah, that we create the table, student list, yeah, and then we say student ID, this time I write it correct, and it's of course an integer, still an integer, yeah, but I want to have this be this the primary key. So I primary key. Okay. Now it's the primary key. What means this primary key? This primary key means MariaDB will check if first 
it will not allow that there is nothing inside. You do not have to enter anything in a database. There can be records without filled in all, all attributes. An attribute which is not filled in, there is written NULL. NULL. Yeah. This is also in the table, you see NULL, yes. Yeah. This means NULL is possible. Of course, I, uh, a key, must, there must be something inside. So if I define this now as primary key, MariaDB will check if I'm telling it what it, what it needs to write there. Yeah? So it has, it's not allowed to be null. Yeah? There must be a value inside. And since this is defined as primary key, it also has to be unique. It has to also be, to be unique in the table and MariaDB will also check this. So if I enter a new record and use an already used key, it will say, no, no, that's not working. And what's this? Do I have now to keep track about the keys I already given to somebody? Do I have to remember what was the last key? Luckily, there's another option, yeah, which is called auto increment. Auto increment. This means now it's the key. However, I do not have to give it to MariaDB. MariaDB will automatically increment the value and every new record will have a new value. Perfect. Okay. Student ID, perfect. This is how I would do this. For name. There is always a forename. So, student forename, and it's a varchar 20. Boom. 20. And I do not want that this is now. Yeah? I cannot define it as primary key, of course. However, there is, there is something which is called not null. Yeah, this means this attribute needs to be given. There needs to be something written inside. Now there's no option here. Okay. And the same is of course true for the given name and the born date. Yeah. Not null. Student uh, surname. Not the given name. Surname of course. Archer 20 not null yeah, and student born date and also not null. That's it. That's a much better table because now I have a key, now I tell you this and this must be filled in. I think it's okay. Enter. Ah, table student list already exists. That's true. That's true. Yeah. There cannot be two tables with the same name. Yeah. So, there's an error message now. Now I'm sitting in front of this and can process it. Sometimes this is running in automated scripts and so on, and the error message will maybe abort these automated scripts. That's not an option. So a better way to prevent an error message would have been to not use create table yeah, here but create table also in create table there's something else I can write if exists if not ex of course if not exists yeah, create table if not exists if not ex exists exists if not exists do this create table if not exists so if it's not existing, it will create the table student list. Okay, and then I will just have to find the correct entries. There, it's already nice that we just press have to press arrow up yeah, and fill. That's it. Yeah. Now let's try this. Query okay, yeah. mm -hmm. but one warning. 
Uh -huh. So I will use now uh, describe describe student list. It's still the old clear. It has not created a new one because it already existed, so it did not create. I get have to get rid of this table. Yeah. The counterpart. We use create to create the table or the database. The counterpart is drop. Yeah? So it's create and drop. Yeah? It's like if you create some kind of pottery. Yeah? You create it, then you drop it, then it's gone. Yeah? So we have to drop. We can even drop a database, but keep it small here. Yeah? We, we only drop the table. Drop table and which table? Our student list. Okay, drop table, bug, dropped. No warning, no way to really. Dropping something is so usual in databases. There is no warning. Okay, it just would be annoying if there is always a warning. Okay, so if I enter now show tables. An empty set. The table is gone. Okay, I will use the same create table if not exists. Yeah. Back. Now it says query UK okay, zero rows affected, but no warning. So I'm show tables. It's there again. Yeah, and describe table. And now there is a key. There is an auto increment, yeah, and null is not allowed. Okay, that's now a good table to start with. Yeah. We have created a database. We have created a table with a key for bit something. Yeah. So maybe something I also want to mention that these these. Uh, numeric data types. Yeah? So these ones. Int and float and so on. They can also be unsigned. Yeah? It's written here. Unsigned means negative values are not possible. Yeah? Then we just write int unsigned. Then there's a certain amount of, of possible values. Then it's shifted from minus something to plus something from zero to plus the double thing. Yeah? It's just shifted, unsigned. This I also wanted to mention. Yeah, I think that's it. You should create your own table now. Think about something where you think a database might be useful. I don't know, uh, sports club, yeah? maybe account, maybe warehouse. Think about something. Create your own table with just a few elements. Yeah, We will learn later how to extend these elements and to change the table and so on. So keep this in mind. Keep something, some attributes for later. <laughs> okay. Uh, just create a, a database and a table with four or five entries okay. for your training. Yeah. Yeah. I think for this video it's enough. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.